I love it. <laughs> well, we see uh, Jeremiah does indeed find that Wally with that uh, Tapu Lele's Wonder Tag ability. Gets Trevenant in play. No items for James on his first turn, but less reliant on Ultra Ball than most decks. We'll see if that actually ends up paying off for James. We, he has the full four copies of Karina. Can use that to find any of the fighting Pokemon he wants. Won't so, be able to play the item card he gets with it, but can just thin a card out as well. So, so do you have do you have a theory uh, on how this matchup works? Like, if he has the Guzma right now, do you play the Guzma, or do you really want to wait until you have the pieces you need to kind of execute a strategy? Like, should he be okay draw passing for a couple of turns here? You know, he may want to wait until he has the opportunity to play something like B-String in a turn, right? If he plays Guzma right. now, he might not get a lot of use out of some of the other trainers in his deck. Like, Muscle Band would be nice, sure. Nest Ball would maybe be okay. Professor's Letter, Wildlands wouldn't really do anything. So, other than that, his only trainers are the Brooklet Hill, or excuse me, uh, the B Strings and the VS Seekers and the Float Stones. So, uh, we'll just have to see kind of what James goes for. Off of the Cynthia, what are the six cards he gets? He did get the strong energy, so we can at least start doing a decent chunk of damage, doing 30 to this Trevenant after the resistance. If he finds a Deancy yeah. Prism Star, he can bump that up to 50. Yeah, I mean, maybe the moral story is he's just not that item dependent. So Ooh, does draw that Zygarde EX. He's just going to chill. He has that Zygarde that could be huge for sure. Definitely going to be an important part of his strategy here in this game. Yeah. Now, we, we talked a little about this uh, uh, with Ryan's, but let's talk a little more. I mean, the reason not to bench that Zygarde is you want to stagger laying down Pokemon against Silent Fear. Yeah, absolutely. Silent Fear places three damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon in play. So if, you know, James was to bench that Zygarde too early, he's basically just... A Putting free damage on it for Jeremiah, which he doesn't want to do, wants to avoid that if he can. We're going to see Jeremiah go ahead and get that Trevenant Break, does get the Dimension Valley as well, can start Silent Fearing this turn for just one energy card. We'll see what his other options are. Looks like it's going to be a Sycamore as his supporter for the turn. Looks like he's got maybe a Guzma in his hand, just wants to discard his hand though and draw a fresh 7. Does want to find another Phantom at some point so he can start evolving into more Trevenants. But something to be note to, to definitely make note of is the fact that uh, Phantom can eventually get sniped out on the bench. Right. So so if you're if you're Jeremiah, do you feel pressure to tree slam given this board state? Not necessarily at the moment. I think you're okay kind of just spreading the damage at this point early on in the game. Tree Slam can definitely be nice, especially if a Buzzwool GX ever hits the field. So may want to hold out for that potentially. Looks like we're just going to see James go ahead and bench the Zygarde. Didn't want to bench it, really, I'm sure, at this point, but since he was going to Sycamore, or excuse me, play Professor Juniper. <laughs> Sycamore, Juniper, all the same, right? Uh, definitely wants to get that down, because he doesn't want to discard it, right? He, he has Rescue Stretcher in his deck, but of course, Rescue Stretcher is an item card, won't be able to use that. So now Brooklet Hill comes out. Might yes. get a Deancey here to do a little more damage. We'll have to see what he goes with, though. Yeah, I mean, given that he lost the strong energy, I'm sure he's thinking, you know what I'd like to do? A little more damage. You know, and something worth noting as well, Deancey's attack in this matchup isn't the worst. For three fighting energy, it does 90 damage, and then you heal 30 damage from each of your benched Pokemon. So that's something that could come into play. Deancey, however, doesn't heal da energy, excuse me, doesn't heal damage from itself. So it will only, um, it, it will, you know, eventually get knocked out by Sullen Fears and Tree Slams. And it does take three energy with no max elixirs. It takes a while to power up. Finest commenting on the internet, people. <laughs> Diancy's attack, I've never used it. <laughs> well, we're going to see it doing 30 damage, of course, because of that Princess's Cheers ability, boosting that damage up to 50, minus 30 for resistance, so 60 on the active and 60 on the benched as well. Here comes a Dimension Valley in play, so Jeremiah will be able to use that Silent Fear once again very cheaply for just one energy. Yeah, you really see the Trevenant uh, a fighting resistance uh, come into play here, because I, I know James would have liked to hold the Brooklyn Hill until after Dimension Valley comes out, but he felt the pressure to get that Diancy on the board just so he could have... I mean, if you're doing 10 damage a turn, you're not going to get there. Definitely not. Want to make sure you're doing more than more than that, for sure. Won't won't really get very far. It takes <laughs> 16 turns to knock out a Trevenant Break doing yeah. 10 damage yeah, a turn. Yeah, if, if so. your plan is to take 16 turns to kill uh, the, the thing spreading 30 damage to your board every turn, you're going to have a bad time. That is a losing strategy, <laughs> for sure. Well, six cards here for Jeremiah off of this Cynthia. I think he wants to find another Phantom. He did have an Ultra Ball in that hand, chose in that hand, chose not to play it. Maybe valuing the other cards in his hand. Maybe scared to bench a Phantom since it can just you know get jet punched over the course of a couple turns. Maybe wants to make sure he has an out to a Trevenant in his hand for the follow up. Right. 
So we'll see. I think he did draw another Ultra Ball. He does have a Trevenant in his hand, so this might be the good a good time to get that Phantom in play. But Tapu Lele being one of his two discards does need to discard one more card, though. Looks like Enhanced Hammer hits the discard. I'm sure that was a tough, uh, tough discard for him. Yeah, must be really he, he valuing. Must have really felt like he needed to go there. Yeah, must be really valuing the other cards in his hand. Must have other powerful options. Enhanced Hammer is very good against Buzzwool, but James Harbor does play eight basic fighting energies, and Enhanced Hammer doesn't quite work on those. But does yeah. also play the full four strong energies, plus of course the new Beast Energy Prism Star. Yeah, I mean with the with the five uh, energies that add damage to your attacks, particularly that new Beast Energy. And I think all things being equal, Jeremiah wants to have an enhanced hammer in hand at that moment. Absolutely. So we do see the Phantom come down. It'll be interesting to see if James targets this down or not. If he does have, like, a Guzma plus a Floatstone and a Strong Energy, he could actually knock out this Phantom and still place 30 damage on this bench, to, uh, one, the Trevenant, once it would go to the bench. We'll see if that might be an option he has available. Silent Fear, though, spreading 30 damage to everything in play. Over to James's side. Looks like he has a Brooklyn Hill, so he can replace the yeah. stadium once again. Yeah, Brooklyn Hill's coming down. Going to go ahead and choose to use it. We'll see what he gets here. Could get another Lander CX. He does play the full two copies of it. Um, maybe something like Pseudo Wudo could come and play. Oh, also, something worth noting that we haven't even mentioned. James does play the Giratina promo. Oh! Which is huge here. My god! We missed that. That's straight fire. Now, that's what he needs the Nest Ball for. He can't get that off the Karina or yeah. the, or the uh, Brooklyn Hill, yeah, right? Yeah, his, his only way to get it out of his He's deck... He's just going to have to luck into it at this point. Yeah, his only way to get it out of the deck would be Nest Ball, and he can't play that with Trevenant active, so he's going to just, like you said, have to draw into it naturally, which can be tough when it's one card out of a 60-card deck. Yeah. And, but like we said as well, James doesn't honestly play that many items. He's got the one copy of Muscle Band. That would be nice to get in play to do a little more damage to these Trevenants. He's got Float Stones, which I'm sure would be nice to get a little mobility. But um, you know, uh, Having said that, I'm sure he's thinking, but I, so I just want to play this one item. Is that okay? <laughs> like, no, that's, that's not going to work. <laughs> not quite how that works, unfortunately. But James does play an end here. We'll force both players to shuffle their hands into their decks get six cards since we still are at the beginning of the game here so so uh let's take a moment since everybody's shuffling and there's a shuffle judge watching these shuffles closely to talk about uh, uh so jeremiah i think the people on stream were clamoring for him because he is also a well-known youtube video yeah, absolutely. creator a, he's the popular Seagrove. That's right. You guys may recognize him from his YouTube channel. He does put out a lot of great content, does a lot of interviews with top-level players as well as judges. So Jeremiah is definitely a really friendly face in the community, and I'm glad that we were able to put him on stream for this round. Yeah, I, I always like watching his like meta discussion videos. I feel like he always has uh, really good uh, players on. Have you been on one of those discussions? I have been on meta discussions in the past, so... It's definitely a good time. I appreciate any time Jeremiah hosts us over there, and he, he I love watching his videos as well. He puts out great content. Yeah, if you're wondering just how baller Jeremiah is, he even gets trainer chip on his videos. So it doesn't get like, better than that. Looks like we're going to see the VS Seeker for the Wally here. Wants to get a Trevenant in place so that that Phantom does not go down too easily. Of course, James did in away Jeremiah's last hand, which already had a Trevenant in it. And we haven't seen Jeremiah attaching that many energy cards yet. He does play a lot of energy. He plays nine, which is kind of high for some of these expanded Trevenant decks. Um, so he'll want to try to get some more attachments. We do see one going there onto the bench. Choosing to still just keep the one energy on the active so he can Silent Fear, keep spreading damage. Not really valuing the uh, Tree Slam quite yet. Damage is adding up. Yeah, definitely is ticking upwards. Can't quite see all of the counters on there. I think we're using some black dice, so makes it a little tougher to see how many counters are on. Yeah, what happened that to the orange dice? I felt like we had orange dice in the prior round. You know, I think they're over there. I think these guys might just be using their own dice, which is fine as well. It just, you know, James's uh, James's dice are a little more difficult for us to see on the screen here. Speak for yourself. Let's see if we can have a technology person make them use the orange dice. So we'll no, see if we can make that happen. The technology people are cuddling their Mimikyus right now. They can't be bothered <laughs> to uh, fix our problems. 
So we do see the strong energy coming on to that Landorus EX. We'll be able to hit 50 damage now with this Hammerhead, which is starting to ramp up. And it'll be interesting to see what he targets down on the bench here. Does James go after the Trevenant, or does he go after the Tapu Lele? Eventually, Tapu Lele will give up two prizes, but Trevenant as well is hard to deal with. He may just want to target that down so that he's softening it up for later on in the uh, oh, later on in the game. Here, now we, we might have an engineer paying more attention. I'm going to see if I can get their attention. Is there any way we can get them to use the orange dice so we can read the damage counters on the board a little better? It's like bananas. So we'll see if we get that We, we want to know how much damage is on the board. So 50 damage going to come out from All this right. hammerhead here. Our, our like obstructionist ways will lead to better outcomes. And this will put this Trevenant up to 140 damage, which means it can get knocked out even on the bench at this point. And it looks like James is going to go ahead and just target down that bench Trevenant, trying to make it easier for him to set up knockouts later on in the game. Yeah, I, I, getting the two prizes off the Tapu Lele is not a priority. Getting a turn with, uh, without having Silent Fear coming the next turn, mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's the important thing here. And we're going to see an N come out. It's going to force each player to shuffle their hand into their deck. Draw the number equal to the number of prizes they have remaining, and we'll see each of these guys still get six prizes, despite how much damage is on James's side at this point in the game, and even a lot of damage on Jeremiah's side. Uh, still no prizes taken yet at this point in the game. Uh, you know, it's interesting. We were talking on uh, uh, when Charlie was playing last round about uh, their Trevenant list was a little bit different. Both of these Trevenant lists have a heavy emphasis on the assumption that the other person's going to get ahead on prizes early. Yeah. Uh, he plays four in as his primary draw engine. He plays the ace trainer. The difference between this list and Charlie's list is he doesn't play the counter catcher. Yeah, that's definitely something that could come into play. Also, something worth noting, Jeremiah's A spec of choice is actually um, is actually scoop up Cyclone, so that could be huge here. He would heal if he could find it off of these six cards and heal this Trevenant. That would just really put James in a tough spot. Uh, looks like he did not quite find it, and looks like Brent's getting his wish come true. We're Guys, I hope, I hope cheers are going up across the chat as we get these very readable damage counters on the board. <laughs> Props to the engineering team for finding a way to politely intervene in the middle of, uh, uh, frankly, a pretty important round. Absolutely. This is We're round, getting it done, people. Round number seven, both of these players are in spots where they need to win at least one more to feel like they're in a good spot for day two. I think both of these players, you know, are, should feel pretty confident regardless heading into these last couple rounds. Like we said, they're both really solid players. Jeremiah is a good player himself, and James, the defending Roanoke regional champion, of course. Uh, are, they, are these guys 601? They are 601 at this point. Yes. Yeah. So, six, six, I believe Jeremiah is 6 and 1. I'm not sure what James's record is. Or no, 5 and 1 at this point since we're in round 7. Oh, so. Ah, is that how math works? Yes. So mm. it looks like. Uh, oh, he did find that scoop of Cyclone we're there. Was able to pick up yeah. that super damaged Trevenant. And that is just totally devastating for James Arnold. Heals 140 damage off of that Trevenant, and that scoop of Cyclone really paying off is the A spec of choice for Jeremiah here in round number seven. I think I think any deck where you where you realize scoop up Cyclone is going to be the A spec of choice, you got a little bit of spice going on. Ooh, yeah, that is it definitely is, it is awesome. Absolutely, very spicy as a as an A spec option. Yeah, yeah, the the people never see it coming. So we're just going to see a Cynthia here. James still hasn't attached an energy this turn, and he's kind of in a tough spot. There's 120 damage on that benched Baby Buzzwole. There's a 90 damage on the Deancey. Those will both go down this next turn. Uh, you know, there's... Uh, you know, what, what's funny is I, I'm sure... I, I know it, it hurt James to bench that Zygarde when he did, but the result is, I mean, the Landorus is just taking uh, uh, both... Massive damage, but the damage is also piling up on the Zygarde, and he can't get into the active. And Landers has a massive three retreat cost as well, making yeah. it really difficult You're to You're never going to retreat that thing. James has the three float stones, but of course can't play them. Not able to find his Giratina promo. Uh, not able to play those trainer cards. And, and what's crazy is, uh, um, I mean, at some level you could say, I mean, James has a strategy here where the Zygarde has to be killed for him to win the game, right? I mean, there's only seven prizes on the board. Everything else can die, and he's still got to go through the Zygarde, but uh, uh, the Zygarde's taken so much damage, it could turn into too little too late. Oh, we need to make sure that uh, DNC has 120 damage. Yeah, it looks like Jeremiah is catching it, I think. DNC has 120 damage on it and only has 120 HP, so we need to make sure that DNC goes to the discard pile because it has 120 damage on it. 
Oh, and yeah, they, they, they already they figured it out. So there we go. We are good to and, go. And it's gone to the lost zone, and that's yes. a discard pile. Excuse me, excuse me. Of course, Prism Star cards, once they get, once they would be discarded, they actually go to the lost zone. They're such powerful cards, they want to make sure once you've gotten your use out of them, you don't get them back. So, so Chip, I know you've actually spent some time on the floor seeing what all the people are playing. Uh, uh, for me, the, the card that I wanted to see the people play was the Lysander uh, Prism Star. And, and some crazy fire deck. Have you seen any of that out on the floor today? I will say, walking around, I did notice one Volcanian deck up in the top 20 or 30 or so tables that's definitely still in contention for day two. I'm not sure that he's playing the Lysander Prism Star, but we'll, uh, maybe that's something we can feature at some point later on. I mean, watching somebody exile uh, an <laughs> army of cards to the Lost Zone. can be very exciting for sure. That's what the people want. <laughs> so we'll see what these players get here. Looks like James is going to go ahead and attach the energy here to the Zygarde. Can he find one of his Guzmas in the next coming turns in order to, um, in order to start getting that Cell Storm off and start healing his Zygarde? We'll have to see what he's able to do. Uh, it's interesting. James is kind of, uh, I feel like he was so demoralized by the scoop up Cyclone, he stopped attacking the tr Bench Trevenants. Yeah, well, it was really smart. The last turn, there was two Phantoms in place, and he knew... Jeremiah had a Trevenant in his hand, so obviously Jeremiah's just going to evolve whichever one James, you know, it's put the damage, damage on. on. So James is like, you know what, I'm going to take these two prizes when I can. I'm, in the next two turns, I'll be able to knock out this Tapu Lele. And, you know, James has searched his deck. Maybe at this point he knows, hey, that Giratina promo's prized. If I take that knockout, I have a chance to take it out of the prizes. Right, right. So we'll see. It looks like Jeremiah did get a Mysterious Treasure off, found another Trevenant break. Doesn't have any other healing option, no Ace of Rollas or anything like that. One other interesting card in Jeremiah's list, actually, is uh, a new card from the Forbidden Light set, Enda Porter, which is a card we haven't really seen much of, never really had much discussion behind it. He's playing the four Enhanced Hammer and Enda Porter. I which don't even is, know what that does. It's very similar to... Oh, this in, is the move of special energy, That's right. right? So it's very similar to Enhanced Hammer, but instead of discarding the energy, you move it, you move the special energy to one of your po opponent's other Pokemon. So actually something pretty interesting we could see is uh, Jeremiah could take that Beast Energy Prism Star if it comes into play and move it to a non-Ultra Beast so James really doesn't get much of an effect out of it. Yeah, I, or I assume you could... I just move the, the strong energy where he as imagines well. is, Yeah, he's like moving the strong energy to Tapu Lele and then it just gets discarded, right? Yeah, that would be great as well, but... yeah. We'll see. James is going to go ahead and send up this Zygarde. Yes. It does have 150 damage on it at this point. Good news, bad news. Does get the He's strong energy. He's two prizes, but he got the Zygarde into the active. And we're going to see a Juniper discard his hand, drawing seven cards. Even this, though he put the third energy on there, I, he just did that for the extra 20, right? He has to use Cell Storm. Yeah, it's he's game over. almost certainly going to be using Cell Storm here. Will still be enough to take a knockout. Does yeah. eighty? Does sixty damage? There was hundred damage on the Trevenant, but with that rescue star, rescue scarf, Pokemon tool card, that whole Trevenant line goes back to Jeremiah's hand, and we actually see Jeremiah's playing the full four rescue scarf. Wants to have access to getting those Trevenants back every single time one gets knocked out. And in this so, point, so if you're Jeremiah, do you want to start tree slamming? Yeah, you want to tree slam to take the knockout here, right? Yeah, if he could Tree Slam, it actually wouldn't quite do the knockout. Zygarde no. does have 190 HP. Oh my god, so it's one of those. Oh, hey, be... look, they put the picture up for <laughs> dummies like me. So it wouldn't quite take the knockout, but it would put it in range to be knocked out by a Tree Slam on the following turn. Right, so right. after healing with Cell Storm. So I definitely think it's correct to go ahead and use Tree Slam. You'll still knock out the Buzzwool on James's bench, and you'll, you'll put 20 damage on Landris, which isn't too bad either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the goal is to just get these last two prizes, right? Yeah. So I'm sure that's what he's going to go for. He did attach the energy, so that makes me think that is the strategy that Jeremiah is going for. And Jeremiah is just in total control of this game. I think he should have this one. Uh, you know, I don't want to speak too soon, but this is definitely looking very yeah, good for uh, Jeremiah. If, you're, if, if you were James, would you be all, already scooping it up here? You know, maybe so, but maybe James is kind of seeing a window. We saw this earlier on in the day where players sometimes will continue to play a game to just kind of get a, a better feel for all the cards in their opponent's deck, right? They want to know what they're going to have access to in the games two and three, want to make sure they're familiar with all the cards. We saw that, you know, play out to pretty good effect in Joey and Sydney's game earlier where Joey could have scooped earlier, played another couple of turns, and was able to learn a little bit more information about Sydney's deck that helped him in the second and third game. So we will uh, see. I think Jeremiah is fine to let this game go as long as uh, James wants. So he's yep. 
He's like, let me play the super rod. Let me be conservative. Yeah, you know, there's there's no reason for me to uh, uh, play super aggressively here, or just assume that I have the win. Yeah, Jeremiah you know, if, is. If James thinks he might have a window, I'm gonna keep playing like he's got a window, even though it looks pretty windowless here. Yeah, it's definitely a very good position for Jeremiah at this point in the game. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, James, James, James yeah. says, ah, that's, that was good enough for me. Yep. So. <laughs> and I think what this comes down to, like, looking back, James just, he started that Landorus, and it's just not a super great attacker, right? It's next, it's second attack, it forces you to discard the energies that you've worked so hard to attach to it. it Buzzwell, sure, it's weak to Psychic, but Knuckle Impact, you don't have, you could go Absorption into Knuckle Impact. There's two prizes right there. That can put on a lot of pressure, potentially. Um, you know, and I think the dream, of course, for James is starting that Zygarde EX. He can just... You know, have that out in play and start self storming like crazy and just getting a bunch of damage on it to Jeremiah's side of the field. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Trevenant, uh, there's reasons at the top tables. Right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's the turn one item lock can just be so powerful at times and, you know, spreading the damage as well, just setting up multiple turns, like multiple knockouts in a turn. Very, very powerful. And we've seen Trevenant have lots of success in its history in the Pokemon TCG. You know, Trevenant as Selgor actually won the World Championships in the Seniors Division in 2014, I believe. So, seen success at that point. It's been very successful and expanded, winning multiple regionals as well uh, with, once Trevenant Break came out. So, uh, definitely a very interesting deck. And it's, it's one of those decks that just always seems to have some sort of staying power here in Expanded. Right. So, so were you playing Pokemon back when the Lost Zone was really a thing? Uh, I actually not. I actually just started playing when Breakthrough became legal. That was like the first set My that I God, started playing. You're yes. like a child. <laughs> I'm still relatively new in terms of the Pokemon TCG. So, but so here's here's true story. When when my uh, when this is like. The moment that I, um, my kids first got involved in Pokemon, right? Mm -hmm. My kid had like a couple of cards, yep. and uh, he wanted me to just buy more cards so he could trade with, trade with his friends. And I was like, we're never going to do that. I don't understand why we just throw money away buying cards so you could trade with your friends. But, but I said, I, you know, I'll win my Dad of the Year award by taking you to a local league to find out uh. how to play the game. So we went to the local league, and I was like, Liam, just bring all your cards with you. Bring all your cards with you. That way they can show you what to do with them. So he brings all his cards, and the, the local uh, uh, league person sits down with him, and she says, okay, let's, let's build your first deck. What's your best card? And uh, his best card, he was like, the Lost World, because if seven cards get into the Lost Zone, you win the game. <laughs> this is a stadium, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I hear him say that to her, and I lean over, because I have to dad it up here, and I say, Helen, I think you got to understand I don't think he knows what his best card is. <laughs> we know so little, we don't even know what cards are good and what cards are bad. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that's bad. And she's like, well, it's out of format. <laughs> yeah, wasn't legal at that point, yeah, totally I guess. Not. Oh, gosh. Totally not. I was like, there you go. We got nothing, people. So but the Lost Zone was my like entry point into Pokemon. Yeah, interesting. Lost Zone is a mechanic that was introduced to the Heart Gold Soul Silver era of cards and Never really had much of a place in black and white through X and Y, but Pokemon has decided to bring it back here in the Sun and Moon sets uh, with these Prism Star cards. And James, once again, starting that Landorus. Uh, he's already yeah. eyeing up that Nest Ball with this Karina. He's like, I'm going to get this Giratina promo in play. <laughs> Let's see if that is what he goes for. Does he have access to it? I didn't see any purple cards when he was looking through his deck. Could he have potentially prized it here? That would no, be... I think, uh, is that, did he just pull it up? What's Not sure. Looks like maybe eyeing the baby buzzwool. Yeah, I assume it. Mm. We'll see for sure here in just a moment yeah, he, what like, he gets. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looks like he's gonna get Deancey no. Prism oh, no. Star. Nest Ball as well. See, Nest Balling for a, the baby buzz. Ah, yeah, no. wow. There right. it is. Jeremiah's probably thinking, now, where was that all of last exactly, game? He was exactly. never able to get it out. Jeremiah was like, man, I liked item locking him before the game even started uh, last game better than this. This is horrible. Yeah, so we will see uh, how having Giratina promo in play affects the way that this rest of this game goes. Yeah, so, so do your trainer chip thing and explain to the people at home what the Giratina promo does. So Giratina promo has uh, the Devoured Light ability, I believe, which are Devouring Light, maybe. Uh, the ability that says as long as this Pokemon is in play, each player's Pokemon breaks have no ability. So it really 
puts pressure on Jeremiah to not actually evolve his Phantoms in to, or his Trevenants into Trevenant Breaks because then that Forced Curse ability does not work. James will gain access yeah. back to his item cards. Yeah, so he has to choose between the oppressive item lock and the ability to silent fear at all. Absolutely. Which makes Tree Slam much more valuable, and it's much harder to pull off a Tree Slam going second here, especially against a deck like Buzzwell that can just put on so much pressure. Yeah. One thing missing on James's side of the field, though, on his first turn, didn't get an energy attachment. Yeah, you'd like to have that uh, energy attachment. Absolutely. Now, I, I think it's also worth mentioning, I, I think one of the interesting things with, about Giratina promo, and I don't know if, how much backstory you have on this kind of stuff, but I, th I feel like the Giratina promo is uh, one in a long line of historical random promos that were <laughs> published by Pokemon when they realized a deck was ridiculously overpowered and needed to be fixed. Yeah, it's certainly a card that seems like it's just meant to counter very specific decks, like Greninja Break was very powerful and standard at the time that it came out, so... You know, Giratina was counter, used to counter that, and also obviously Trevenant here in Expanded is very good against that. And it's just, you know, it's interesting from time to time when we see a promo card come up that sees a lot of play in the Pokemon TCG. We saw it last season. There was a Salamence EX that came in a promo box that was uh, like a, one of these huge, massive, super premium trainer collections, something along those lines. And that card was very hard to get your hands on, but it was also very good against an EX heavy format. So it's just interesting to see whenever they print the these powerful promo cards. Uh, I bought one. Maybe from <laughs> Collector's Cash. We're sponsored by Collector's Cash. Yes. <laughs> it's Collector's Cash. It a great like... place to buy some Pokemon cards because they're sponsoring us. We love them. Absolutely. They do great things for us over here. Yeah, I mean, I remember, I, I remember, and it was like, what was interesting was I didn't see, like, the Pokey Beach kind of hype for it, but I remember the first time I, like, walked into a Target and they had that Jirachi, star, the Stardust Jirachi. Yeah. And I was like, well, hello. I guess Pokemon decided to give us a Toad Counter. I'm going to buy a couple of these. <laughs> and, and then, like, the next day, Facebook's blowing up with people like, oh, my God, I just found this thing at uh, Target. It's totally out of control. Yeah, that Jirachi was definitely very good at the time that it came into effect. Yeah. And Jeremiah there over on his turn did, did get a Mystery Energy attached to his Phantom, was able to use Ascension, finds the Trevenant out of his deck, gets that evolution so that that Forest Kurtz uh, lock is in play. Yeah. Now, interestingly, I, I think the problem with uh, Jirachi and what held it back somewhat in the format is the same thing that held back uh, James last uh, turn. Uh, you know, Jirachi was really a, a hard counter to a Seismitoad deck that was item locking people. And the problem is it's hard to nest ball for your Giratina promo or, you know, grab uh, a, a Jirachi uh, one of in a deck if you're item locked. Absolutely. So we did see. James was able to get off the hammerhead, starts putting some pressure down onto these Pokemon on Jeremiah's side. We do see the Tapu Lele coming out for Jeremiah. Going to go ahead and just grab a Cynthia with that Wonder Tag ability. Really wants to find a Trevenant here so that this bench Trevenant does not go down. Also, bench Phantom. This Phantom, yeah. yes, thank you. Um, and That's my contribution to the stream, people. I I'm all done here. Thank you. <laughs> also going to definitely want to find a Dimension Valley so he can use that Tree Slam attack and doesn't have to put the Trevenant Break in play. But honestly, I wouldn't be that surprised if he just put the Trevenant Break in play anyway. He gets to do the little bit of extra damage with Silent Fear to the Bench Pokemon, can start targeting down that Giratina maybe, and... Um, it also makes Trevenant gain a lot more HP, whereas at this point it is in danger of getting knocked out if James is able to find another strong energy. Uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting question because, I mean, he's only got two Pokemon on the board right now. If you Tree Slam, you're going to lay down 100 damage counters. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's versus... big, though. We do see the Enhanced Hammer come uh, out. Oh, yeah, you know he was looking for that. Yeah, he says, let's go for the Tree Slam because otherwise you'd only put down 90 damage. He says, you know, in the big scheme of things... Uh, I might as well keep up the item lock. And and what we know, and what our streamers at home uh, know that, that uh, Jeremiah does not, is that James's collection of items is not so overwhelming. No. There's a lot to be scared of here. Yeah, B-String, I think, would be the best thing for James at some point in this game, but as far as his item cards go. But Jeremiah can definitely avoid having to put himself at four prize cards or three prize cards potentially if he takes like a really big four prize turn which is not far that far-fetched for Trevenant yeah. honestly um, but James is playing very intelligently you know making sure he's not benching too many EX Pokemon not going to give up too many prizes at once and maybe we'll see a big turn where J James can pull off a Guzma into a you know multiple B strings in a single turn and he does get the knockout here on this Phantom that is actually huge 
And the math is working out pretty well for him. Next turn, a Hammerhead will knock out the active Trevenant if Jeremiah does not break Evolve it. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're Jeremiah here, uh, even if you draw into a Phantom, uh, if you don't have the Trevenant in hand, do you feel pressure to, to break that Trevenant? Yeah, you, you know, I definitely could see that argument. Um, and, you know, he knows even if this Trevenant does go down in the active spot, he knows he's getting it all back into his hand, right? He's got that Rescue Scarf attached, so he may be okay attaching uh, or benching a Phantom if he knows that, hey, I'm going to get all of this back. I'll be able to get the Trevenant on the next turn. Going to go ahead and choose to play an end, though. Put James down to five, and Jeremiah will shuffle and draw six. Yeah, well, yeah, I think I think he saw James grab the computer search off the Karina, and, and he thought, you know, if I have to choose between a Cynthia and an N, let's make James put that back in the deck. Absolutely. So Jeremiah's going to want to find another Phantom here, almost certainly. Oh, my God. He really, really needs it. <laughs> Absolutely. So off of these six cards, does he find a Phantom? Has already played a lot of his Mysterious Treasures, so might not have that many outs left in his deck. Yeah, I mean, Jeremiah's just not drawing super well so far. Yeah, this has been a lot more awkward of a game for Trevenant, and this is kind of what the deck can do when you go second, right? Your opponent is able to get the things they need played on the first turn. Jeremiah does get the Phantom down, however, so he'll be able to do that. He does have the Trevenant break in his hand. Do you think he evolves it here? I'm yeah, yeah, he's really torn. He's, he's agonizing. I think Jeremiah himself is unsure of what he needs to do in this situation. It's definitely a tough spot. Yeah, is the correct play to survive another turn and give up the item lock or keep the item lock and, and just... Uh, I mean, obviously, he's got the Rescue Star Scarf already attached to that Trevenant. He knows he's going to be able to keep the Trevenant lock up again. The question is just if he wants to give a prize. Looks like he's going to opt to hold on to the break here. Does use Tree Slam once again. Lucky for him, uh, Landris is much closer to being knocked out now. Now, he missed the energy attachment here, mm -hmm. and that means that, that there's not going to be a tree slam next turn. No, unfortunately not. He could maybe go for, like, an energy drive with Tapu Lele, but it would only do 40 damage because of, you know, Jeremiah doesn't play double colorless energy, so he'd only be able to attach one psychic. With Dimension Valley, he can use that energy drive attack. Wouldn't quite be enough to knock out Landorus, and he's not going to be able to attack with Trevenant next turn. Yeah, and I know I mean, people saw the first five rounds, people playing choice bands, stuff like that. Jeremiah doesn't play those because his primary attack, Silent Fear, doesn't do damage. It places right. damage counters. Yes, yep. Very similar effects, but they are different. You know, lots of things, you know, are relevant to those specific wordings. Damage counters versus actually doing damage. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I think in the first couple of rounds we saw today, there were lots of cards like Mr. Mime was important at Sidney Morisoli's round, where... She's trying to jet punch the bench, and Mr. Mime stops bench damage. Yeah. Mr. Mime does not stop placing damage counters, which is what Silent Fear does. Part of the thing that I think made Silent Fear such a powerful part of this deck is uh, it very difficult to uh, avoid uh, that damage. Mr. Mime is not a counter. So it looks like we're going to see Brooklet Hill on James's side. More than anything here, I think he's just wanting to get rid of the Dimension Valley on Jeremiah's side. Might not even get anything with this, honestly. Might not want to put the other Pokemon in play. But maybe at this point, he's kind of looking at Jeremiah's side and saying, hey, I'm going to take out your Trevenant this turn. You don't have a way to attack this turn. So I might have a turn of items, potentially, if you have to send up something like a Tapu Lele. So maybe I'm okay going ahead and benching something like my Landorus. Hey, anyway, it's interesting that he is really leaning into the Landoruses, even though you would think that, uh, I mean, I guess Tree Slam two shots you. So, you know, you, you want to tell him, hey, I'd rather use Silent Fear and I attack for five or six turns as opposed to getting two shot. But in this situation, I mean, you know you're not going to get Tree Slam next turn. There's no attack coming. So there we go. We see the Enhanced Hammer come out. Going to get rid of that strong energy on Buzzwell GX. We see a Mystery Energy coming down on to the Trevenant. The Seeker, I think, is going to play an N here. It looks, look, looks like that's what he was going for. Oh, no, actually an Ace Trainer here. A little bit better than N. Going to force James to shuffle in and only draw three, whereas Jeremiah will get to draw six. So that's kind of one of the more interesting cards in Jeremiah's list that we've seen him choose to play. And yeah, I do like that Jeremiah's list is unique compared to what we've seen from other uh, Trevenant lists. We've got the Anna Porter, we've got the four Enhanced Hammer, just going with the full four. Uh, we've got that Ace Trainer, definitely lots of interesting options. Yeah, well, it's interesting. I, I assume that Anna Porter is really only in there to try to move strong energies to non 
uh, fighting Pokemon. Yeah, I actually was watching... Are there watching... other situations you would play it? Yeah, I actually saw it be useful in Jeremiah's <clears throat> round against a Zoark deck. It, against a Zoark deck, it could potentially become something like a... Uh, fifth Enhanced Hammer, right? Where right. you're able to move a special energy from a Zoark GX to something that you're going to be knocking out that turn with Silent Fear, or something that's not going to be able to utilize it very well, like if they had to bench Mr. Mime, or uh, you know, something along those lines. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. I, I remember looking at that card, and I was like, well, this is just objectively worse than Enhanced Hammers, <coughs> so why would I ever do that? I guess the answer is, if you want a fifth hammer, yep. that's a good reason. Yeah, <laughs> if you've already got four Enhanced Hammers in your deck, and you want more disruption as far as special yeah. energy goes, Inner Porter is the way to go as far as items go. I found Enhanced Hammer so good, I had to add a fifth. <laughs> so... Still over here. It looks like it's actually on the James's turn. He's playing a Cynthia here. Gonna shuffle and draw six cards. Maybe wants to find a strong energy to start boosting the damage he can do to this Trevenant. Right now, he's only gonna be doing 30 damage. I think he does have the strong energy in his hand, so we'll see if he wants to put that on to the active. I think he drew a lot of energy that turn off of the Cynthia. Yeah, I mean... I recognize he missed some energy attachments early, so eventually the day would come where he just draws gobs and gobs of energy. But, yeah, you certainly look at that and you feel like he's got gobs and gobs of energy. Yeah, definitely not ideal, I think, on James' side of the field. We're going to see. It looks like he's debating benching the Buzzwool, and we'll go ahead and do that. You know, Jeremiah's at a point where he might take go down to four prizes this turn. And that means that that baby Buzzwill could come up and do a decent chunk of damage, actually, for just one single energy card. Yeah, that's I, I recognize James was really kind of thinking about that option of putting the baby Buzzwill down, because if he decides to start Silent Fearing and doesn't KO the Landorus right away, uh, uh, then the baby Buzzwill is just taking damage. But he also has the option to tree slam the Landorus now, and then he would have to put a Pokemon up. He wants to put up the baby Buzzwill. So we see a Trevenant coming into play for Jeremiah's uh, Mystery Energy onto the active. Will need to find the Dimension Valley still if he wants to attack this turn. Uh, looks like that is a Wally he's playing right there. Going to go ahead and get another Trevenant in play. These Phantoms are not going to get knocked out by any Hammerheads today. Just wants to get those Trevenants streamed and uh, make sure he's got a good stream of uh, attackers going for him. And keeps the lock up as well. Uh, you know, I, I, I trainership. I know you saw me put the call out on Facebook before uh, before this tournament of like asking people what they wanted me to talk about that was not on the list, not just like straight up commentating these rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, as a first time commentator, these rounds are action packed. Absolutely. What the heck? There's a lot going on every turn that is worth talking about for sure. And looks like Jeremiah here has chosen to break evolve, which means James will get access to his item cards. Jeremiah. Uh, and this is actually not a bad spot. He's able to spread a lot more damage with Silent Fear now. I think he had to do it mostly because he missed the Dimension Valley, wasn't able to knock out the Landorus, but he does give his Trevenant a lot more HP, and James can play item cards, but he has, like, no items in his hand. It's all yeah. energy. I think a Guzma and a <laughs> Professor Juniper as well. James is looking at his hand and saying, now's that time, let's go. Oh, I got nothing. <laughs> it is definitely unfortunate for James. James is, James is trying to hold off attaching that strong energy as long as he can because he knows that, that Jeremiah uh, plays so many hammers he couldn't stop with four. Yeah, lots, lots of disruption on Jeremiah's side. James is definitely not going to put that strong energy down, I think, until he's ready to use it and ready to get you know, full value out of it. Has a Guzma, has a Juniper, opting not to play either one right now. I don't think he wants to Juniper and have to discard so many trainers, or excuse me, so many energy cards. Yeah. He could Guzma, but just going to go ahead and use that Hammerhead. Places 30 onto Trevenant, and yeah. there's now 60 uh, damage on that Lele. I'm sure he's just uh, uh, salty. that like He's like, now I have the Guzma, I don't have any items to play. Yeah, you know, it's like, I haven't been able to play items all last game. I didn't find my Guzmas when I needed them. And now I have my Guzma, but now there's no items that I can play. Can't use my B-Strings, can't use my VS Seekers, my Muscle Band is useless, and he's just left with a lot of clunky item cards in his deck that are unplayable. And that's kind of what the goal of Trevenant is, right? Just right. make it so your opponent can't... Like, it, it just makes their entire game plan awkward. Uh, we've, seen, we've seen two Trev decks at the top tables. Mm -hmm. uh, have you seen any Sableye? 
Uh, I saw a couple earlier on in the day, but I haven't seen. I didn't it's notice any apart. when I was walking yeah. down through the top tables last round. Lots of interesting decks, mostly Trevenant, Zoark, and Buzzwell. Definitely the three most popular. There was a couple Night March here and there. We also saw a couple of Vespaquin around. A couple of interesting Toad decks. The Volcanian I mentioned. Uh, the Mega Gardevoir that we featured on stream is still doing well. So it is. Uh, it's definitely a very diverse field, but. It is very focused around the big uh, the big three at this point, I think. Trevenant, Buzzwool, and Zoroark. Jeremiah kind of so, pushing so that Jamagarb deck. Jeremiah is so eager to draw cards. He was like, let me draw the cards, and then I'll move the deck back. Because let's <laughs> go. Gets that energy attachment. And we're going to go ahead and see the Silent Fear. Does take the knockout on the active. Places three damage counters on each bench Pokemon. Setting up that Trevenant, excuse me, setting up that Giratina to actually get knocked out on James's next turn. What is James going to send He's going to put the up? Buzzwool up, right? Looks like the judge just wants to read Giratina real fast. Uh, no, I think, you know, we know James has that Guzma in his hand. Maybe he wants to send something up, play the Guzma, bring up Tapu Lele, and take a big knockout here, potentially, with on that Tapu Lele. Ah. Let's see what his top deck was. Looks like it's a Beast Ring at the perfect time. <laughs> Je Jeremiah just went to four prizes. He's like, let's Guzma go. brings up Tapu Lele. Beast Ring can come out and get two energy cards onto that. I assume the Buzzwool GX on the bench is what's going to get powered up. But maybe that Baby Buzzwool, honestly. We'll see what he goes with. Baby Buzzwool's second attack does 80 damage, and then you flip two coins, and it does 20 more for each heads you get. So it's hey, we, we talked earlier about how he doesn't run any tools because he's used to Silent Fearing. I'm sure he wishes he had a Muscle Band to Tree Slam mm. uh, uh, next turn now. Yeah, because absolutely. Because that, that Baby Buzzwool is going to wreck things. Oh, he, no, he goes for the big Buzzwool. Yeah, looks like he's going to go ahead and attach to the big Buzzwool GX on the bench. Baby yeah. Buzzwool is still weak to Psychic, so Tree Slam can still come out and hit 120 damage. So he can still deal with this next turn, which right. I think is why James is but opting to attach to the bench. Yeah. With 60 damage already on it. But the 120 is not going to take a knockout here. He's yeah, with 60 damage already on the Buzzwool, it would be able to finish it off. Yeah. yeah well, he's got a Silent Fear again next turn, right? Well, he may... Uh, oh, is, are there... There's only 60 damage on the Buzzwall, so if he, if he hits it for 120, is that right? Off right, but if he... I'm talking about knocking at that the active Buzzwall, oh, not yeah, yeah, the yeah. bench Buzzwall. Sorry. So, yeah. I'm already obsessed with that Buzzwall uh, GX on the bench. Looks like we're actually going to see him attached to the active, and this is smart. It's actually playing around the potential Guzma from Jeremiah, where he could Guzma and like get a big hit off on this Buzzwall GX. Right. But, well, and we know he's still holding that strong energy, right? Yeah. So he's, he knows that he can knock out that Tapu Lele uh, next turn. And with only two prizes remaining on James's side, out of nowhere, this game has gotten very, very close. Uh, definitely a tough matchup for James, and he has found a way to, to give himself a shot here in this game at number two. Yeah, I mean... Ooh, but this is big and in from Jeremiah. Going to put James down to just two cards, and it's going to be huge what two cards James gets off of this. Yeah, yeah, and he was holding that strong energy mm -hmm. because he knew he was going to be able to uh, knuckle impact uh, uh, next turn if he held on to that for 180, kill the Tapu Lele. Mm -hmm. He's going to need some good pieces in, the, uh, in these two cards uh, plus his uh, top deck. So we'll see what the two cards are. Jeremiah, of course, is going to still be able to draw four. Maybe wanting to look for that Dimension Valley so he could get the knockout on this baby Buzzwool. See what it is. Silent Fear would, however, knock out that, uh, that uh, Giratina on the bench. It looks like that's the route he's going to take. Silent Fear spreading the damage, knocking out the Giratina and the uh, Deancey Prism Star. I know what's interesting is... Um, and that means James only has one more Guzma in deck. If he wants to Guzma the Lele, he's going to oh, need to find those pieces. Right? James does have VS Seeker in his hand and Beast Energy, but that Giratina was just knocked out. If it was still yeah, in play, he'd yeah. have access to his items, and he'd actually be able to win this game on this turn, but he doesn't have access to it, unfortunately. Yeah, that's you. you knew that was coming. He's like, I run all these Seekers that I haven't gotten to play. If he had had a Seeker in his hand the last turn, you know he would have played it and pulled up the Guzma knowing the Silent Fear is coming. You know, and it's honestly interesting. I think he has that Beast Energy in his hand. We could see him retreat this active into the Buzzwool GX and take a knockout with a Knuckle Impact maybe. Maybe we would see him attach to the active and go for a swing around, even doing 80 damage plus 20 more for each of the two heads, or each of the 
each heads from the two coins that you flip. We'll see what he opts to go with. Oh, it's definitely a, in a tough, it, tough spot here. I mean, getting one knockout is easy. Getting two is very difficult. You know, he's played this game so smart, so well to this point. Looks like he's going to go ahead and retreat. Oh, it's, it's definitely a tough call. What does he send up here? Maybe the Landorus EX, something he could try to do. <laughs> he's Is so, that a thing? Yeah. yeah. He's very I torn. Like, I was like, wow, how can he put the energies in the discard if he's not sure what he's going to do yet? Yeah. It's aggressive. Yeah, it looks like we might just see a sledgehammer that. here. Deals 10 damage, I believe. Should, should just be 10 damage, yeah, after resistance, so... Not doing a lot, oh. unfortunately, and this is this is not looking good for James. So he's he's planning the knuckle impact next turn for the knockout, but and there's the feels... Guzma. That's that's what Jeremiah needs right there. He's able oh. to tree slam for the knockout on that bench. Buzzwell GX gets the win. Oh, uh, Lysander was the <laughs> next the top card. Deck. Wow, one That's more turn is all James Arnold needed to the, win that game. The sad, sad tears, man. And he had that strong energy in hand. Uh, uh, before the uh, not, before the end was played, yeah. that was absolutely brutal. You know, Jeremiah did exactly what he needed to win that game, and we just see the power of Trevenant Wright spreading the damage, taking multiple prize turns, and that item lock as well. Just even though uh, you know th there was definitely a closer game in that game too, James did what he needed to put himself in a position to win. Trevenant was just too strong. Uh, and I mean, that's two spicy wins for uh, Trevenant uh, in the last two rounds. Uh, that means Trevenant is both at the top tables, which uh, I think says a lot about the deck, mm -hmm. and and it's beating top players. Uh, um, and, you know, what's been pleasant, I, I don't know how uh, James would feel about this, but I feel like these games have been kind of entertaining and fun. Mm -hmm. I've enjoyed it for sure, absolutely. And I hope you guys have two watching at home with us. So we really appreciate all your support. I think we're going to maybe try to grab James or uh, Jeremiah for a quick... Nope, Jeremiah's run off. So we're, we're not going to grab Jeremiah for a winner's interview. Why would he leave? <laughs> so, Those slackers. So I think the next round is going to get started soon. We are running into round eight here coming up soon. So definitely stay tuned. We'll be back yeah, very Chip soon. Chip is going to be back. Yes. I'm going to go find out what my kids are doing. <laughs> Junior and seniors have wrapped up here. They have. I, I know that one of the things that people told me was to have some sort of update on juniors and seniors. I have no idea. I know my junior uh, uh, made top 16 after starting terribly. Go him. I'm going to go find out how uh, seniors ended, and, uh, you know, that'll be uh, super exciting. But carry on. Eight and nine are coming. Better commenting than me. 